Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power where we are creating a community of people interested in and excited about economics. And if that's you, you probably have considered majoring in economics. But I think there are a lot of people who are hesitant about majoring in economics because there are a lot of misunderstandings or possibly lies that you have heard about majoring in economics. And so that's why in this video, I want to address what I think are the six biggest lies about majoring in economics and why they should not stop you from going on and studying the best major that's out there. The first lie, and it really just shocks me how much I hear this, is that there are no jobs if you major in economics. Now. I can relate to this one. Let me tell you, when I first was introduced to economics, I was in high school and I just loved the topic. I was very excited about it when I applied to different schools. I said I wanted to major in economics and then I got to my freshman year of college and I just really felt like, what was I going to do if I majored in economics? I, I just had like a crisis. And so instead of majoring in economics, I started looking at engineering because engineering, people who major in engineering, they become engineers. And I eventually settled on computer science because when you major in computer science, you go on and you work with computers. Like I could see the direct path to jobs. But if you say I'm gonna major in economics and then are you gonna become an economist? Like there aren't that many jobs that are formally titled economist. So it can be hard for people to say like, that's what I'm going to do. So I totally understand when people say there are no jobs in economics, why you might think that. But let me go ahead and show you the data because we can actually look at the data behind this. So I grabbed the data from the National Center of Education Statistics and they have data across lots of different majors for the unemployment rate and the salary. And this is great because we wanna know not just whether you're gonna have a job, but also whether it's going to be a good job. So on this graph right here, what you're gonna see is along the x-axis, you have the unemployment rate. So the bad part to be is way over here on this side. And along the y-axis, you're gonna see the salary. So the higher up you are on this graph, the more money you're making. Now I've shaded these two rectangles, and that is just kind of the average range. That means if the majors in these, they're statistically the same thing. So down in the corner over here, this is the worst place to be because you're gonna have really high unemployment rates and really low salaries. Whereas it's better to be further up on the graph and a little bit more towards the left. So what do we see for all of the different majors? Each dot on this graph is a major and yes, you see that there's somebody down here in that bad corner. But fortunately it's not economics though, I won't say who that is, but we want to go back and see where is economics. It's right up here. It is in this fantastic range where it has an, an average unemployment rate. It's just the same as any other major you might take, but it has an above average salary. And that's fantastic. What this is saying is not only are you going to get a job at the same rate as just about any other major, you are going to have a much higher salary than most majors. And so not only will you have a job if you major in economics, you will have a good salary. And that is why that is a big lie that there are no jobs in economics. There are, and they're good jobs. The second major lie about studying economics is that you cannot do anything unless you get a PhD. I see where people are coming from here because you can't, like the title economist often goes to people who hold PhDs. And you'll see like big news about, oh, Uber is hiring a ton of economists. Amazon is just hiring economists like crazy. And those are typically PhD economists. And so the question is, can you succeed in your career if you major in economics and you don't go on and get a graduate degree of some sort? And the answer to this again is yes, and we have data on this. So I really like this survey that was published by the Wall Street Journal a couple years back. It's a pay scale survey and they only surveyed bachelor's degree holders. This means they graduated with their bachelor's degree and didn't get any graduate study. No, no PhD, no MBA, no JD. It's just a bachelor's in economics. And you could look at what they did 10 years later and this is where economics just really shines. So 10 years after graduation, if you look at the median salary, that is 50% of people made more than this, you'll see that economics makes it the top five of majors. Like it, you have a really good chance of succeeding. One of the highest chances of success 
by majoring in economics. But let's imagine that you are just a go-getter, the top of your field kind of person that wants to just get out there and succeed. Well, that means you're probably gonna be in like the top 10%. That means you're gonna be in this 90th percentile or higher. And if we look at those, economics has the highest performers across all majors 10 years down the line. Like you can succeed if you just have a bachelor's degree. You don't have to go on and get a PhD. You don't have to get an MBA. Plenty of people have lots of success with just a bachelor's degree in economics. The third major lie is that economics is ideological. And we can look again at data to answer this question. So we can't quite look at ideology, but let's go ahead and look at political party. How many economists, how many economics faculty members are, re are associated with the Democratic Party and how many are associ associated with the Republican Party? And that's gonna give us a little bit of an idea of how unbalanced the economics major is. And there have been a couple of studies that have looked at this. They've looked at it at top universities and at liberal arts colleges. And they actually looked up the faculty and they were able to go to voter, voter registration data and see how many were registered as Democrats and how many were registered as Republicans. And then they did this across a bunch of different majors. And what you find in both top universities and liberal arts colleges is that economics is actually one of the most balanced majors across all disciplines. Like the faculty in economics, still like all, all faculty skew towards Democrat, Democrats. You have more Democrats than Republicans uh, on in all of the schools that they looked at. That doesn't mean necessarily every school in the country, but in the schools and these samples, you always saw more Democrats than Republicans. But the, the, you did at least find some Republicans in these schools. Whereas if you look at like some of these other majors, there's this heavy bias towards Democrats. And this just, to me, shows that economics is a much more balanced field, that it's actually the least ideological out of all the fields, and that it attracts people from both sides of the political spectrum. And I really appreciate this about economics, and I feel that it's been a much more welcoming community in terms of politics than I see in other disciplines. The fourth major lie is that this degree is only for people interested in studying uh, finance or business or something like that. But we have economists who study tons of different things. I was interested in development economics and the Nobel Prize in economics was just announced a couple months ago and it went to some people doing pioneering work in development economics. If you wanna see my reaction to that announcement, go ahead and check out this because I freaked out. But it doesn't have to be just going to poor countries. If you're interested in health, if you're interested in education, if you're interested in so many different things, there are usually economists working on this. In fact, if you want what I think is a really interesting display of the range of economists, you should go check out the podcast Probable Causation. Now, Probable Causation is about law, crime, and economics. How do these things come together and interact? How do we deter people from committing crime? What happens when we set up these certain incentives? It's a fantastic podcast and it really exhibits the totally different ways that economists come and look at problems and they're in problems that aren't just finance or business. The fifth major lie is that it's not a science. And this, this is just a silly debate. So science is about coming up with hypotheses and testing them. Historically, economics has been very theoretically driven and looking at models, and that was when we were generating hypotheses. Today, with the vast abundance of data and computing power, we're much more into testing these hypotheses. And so we have lots of people who are very empirically motivated and who are giving students the skills to go out into the job market with that kind of science background. The sixth and final major lie about economics is that you have to be good at math to major in economics. This lie is the closest to the truth, I'll say. Like, economics often requires a lot of math. But the reason why I think it's a big lie is because you don't have to be, like, good at math in this fixed mindset way to major in economics. You need to have a growth mindset and say, I can get better at math by taking economics. I think my favorite example of this comes from Barbara Oakley, who was a Slavic languages major, I believe, and she was all about linguistics and she absolutely hated math. Basically, I flunked my way through elementary, middle, and high school math and science. 
So it's a little strange looking back now because today I'm a professor of engineering and I'm passionate about my job. She realized that she can learn how to do math and she realized that it wasn't whether you were good at math or not, it was whether you could learn how to study math and learn the principles. But the point is, you can become better at math if you major in economics and might even motivate you to become better at math. You might finally realize that there's a reason to be good at math. And yes, you might have to improve your math skills while you're majoring in economics. But in this world where we have so many careers that are oriented towards people who can do math and who can at least understand statistics and data, like don't you want to major in something that's going to prepare you for a career in that world? If you're interested in seeing more about the power of markets and economics to shape our world, be sure to check out these videos and please subscribe to join this community. We'll see you in the next video on market power.